JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week February the 7th until February the 11th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following a busy week uh, with three major central bank decisions as well as the US jobs data, the calendar becomes lighter this week, especially during the first uh, three days. However, bearing in mind uh, the, the geopolitical tensions in Ukraine, we cannot rule out um, volatile, volatile market swings. On Thursday, we have the US CPIs, which could add to a case of more aggressive tightening by the Fed, while on Friday, we get the preliminary UK GDP for the fourth quarter, which could shape market, exp market expectations on how the Bank of England plans to move forward. Now let's take things in more detail and from the beginning. Uh, on Monday today, during the Asian session, we already got Australia's retail sales for the fourth quarter and China's Kaijin services and composite PMIs for January. Australia's uh, retail sales rebounded strongly, which may have allowed uh, Aussie traders to keep bets over several hikes by the RBA this year elevated, while the Chinese indices slid somewhat but remained above the boom or bust uh, zone of 50. Now, as for the rest of the day, we don't have any major release on the agenda, but we do have a speech by ECB President Christine Lagarde. Last week, at the press conference following the ECB decision, she, she said that inflation remained elevated for longer than previously thought and that the economy was hurt less than anticipated by the pandemic. She also added that uh, the March and June meetings will be essential for, for evaluating their guidance, which means that they could, after all, decide to lift rates in 2022. Remember that prior remarks uh, by her and several of her colleagues, we are highlighting the case of no liftoffs this year. Now that, uh, now that the uh, door is open uh, and comments adding to that chance could allow some more euro buying. In other words, if Lagarde confirms the case of, uh, or let's say the chances of uh, a rate hike by the ECB this year, the euro could continue gaining. Now on Tuesday, Asian time, we get Australia's NAB Business Confidence Index for January, for which no forecast is available, while later in the day we have the US NFIB Small Business Optimism Index for January and Canada's Trade Balance for December. No forecast is available for the NFIB Index either, while Canada's trade surplus is expected to have decreased to 2.62 billion Canadian dollars from 3.13 billion. Now on Wednesday, the only release worth mentioning may be Germany's trade balance for December, with the forecast pointing to a small decline in the nation's surplus to 10.4 billion euros from 10.9 billion. That said, Germany's trade balance has uh, very rarely been a market mover, and thus we don't expect any reaction by the common currency at the time of this release. Now, for more than half of the week, the economic calendar appears very light, but that doesn't necessarily mean a quiet uh, trading activity. Let's not forget that tensions in Ukraine remain elevated and new developments could easily result in violent market swings. Following reports by US President Biden's administration that, uh, to the US Congress that Russia has uh, built up 70% of the necessary force to invade Ukraine entirely, French President Macron is scheduled to speak with Russian President Putin today and tomorrow, 
while U.S. President Joe Biden is uh, scheduled to meet with the German Chancellor Olaf uh, Scholz uh, today. Any resolution or escalation has the potential uh, to not only affect oil prices, which hit uh, $19 per barrel for the first time since 2014, but also the broader market sentiment. So up until uh, up end on t uh, up until end on Wednesday, the calendar is uh, is very light. But that doesn't mean that we will not get uh, any uh, volatile market activity. So despite a relatively light agenda, we will uh, pay close attention to any developments surrounding. The, the, the geopolitical landscape. Now, on Thursday, that changes. The calendar becomes a bit more interesting, and the spotlight is likely to fall on the U.S. CPIs for January, with both the headline and the core rates expected to have continued to rise. Specifically, the headline CPI is expected to have accelerated to 7.3% year-over-year from 7%, and the core one to jump to 5.9% year-over-year from 5.5%. Now, the message we got from the latest FOMC decision is that a hike and 25 basis points hike is coming in March, but most importantly, there is a decent likelihood for more liftoffs this year than the December dot plot suggested. Although the US dollar slid in the days after the, after the meeting, Friday is better than expected uh, jobs report sparked a fresh round of uh, buying, perhaps adding more credence to the view of uh, of faster tightening. According to the Fed Fund futures, investors are indeed fully pricing in and 25 basis points hike for March, while they see another four by the end of the year. Remember that the December uh, plot pointed to only three quarter point liftoffs uh, for this year. So, with all that in mind, further acceleration in inflation could encourage participants to add uh, to their bets. Uh, of faster tightening and perhaps help uh, the dollar move move higher. At the same time, expectations over higher rates uh, sooner could hurt equities, as this means higher uh, borrowing costs, but also lower present values, especially for high growth firms, which are usually valued by discounting expected cash flows for the months and years ahead. Now, finally, on Friday, attention is likely to turn to the UK and the preliminary GDP, GDP for the fourth quarter, which is forecast to have grown 1.1% quarter over quarter, the same quarterly pace as in the third quarter. However, this is likely to take the year-over-year -year rate slightly lower to 6.5% from 6.8%. At the same time, we get the nation's industrial and manufacturing production rates for December, and both of them are expected to have declined notably. Now, at last week's decision, the Bank of England decided to lift interest rates by 25 basis points to 0.50% uh, via a 5 to 4 vote, with the four descenders calling for a 50 basis points hike. Now, given that only one member needs to be convinced uh, that a double hike may be appropriate at the next gathering, economic data may attract more attention moving forward. Therefore, a positive surprise in, um, in uh, the aforementioned data could uh, increase speculation for a double hike at the next uh, Bank of England gathering and perhaps support the pound, while a disappointment could add to the case for another quarter point liftoff, which could prove negative for the currency as this is already fully priced in. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 9 o'clock a.m. GMT. Bye. Have a great day and a greater rest of uh, the week. JFT, just fair and direct.